Hello everyone, it's that time again. Oh baby now. You may have thought we were giving up on ADC. Well, let me tell you, we're not giving up on ADC. We got we got some we got some uh, some good Twitch games in today. We did. We did. We got some Twitch games in. We ended on a bit of a sour note, but this was an AFK. This is some crazy lag we were dealing with. So we're actually going to reinstall the client after this episode. But our three Twitch games that we played today, ah, not so bad, not so bad. So we're going to be looking into doing some more Twitch games coming up. So be prepared for some lessons on Twitch in the future. However, today we're actually going to not look at our ADC lesson or ADC game. We're going to look at this Jana game because whenever I see a scoreline like that, and I see it was a defeat. That's my fault. 100% that's my fault. I don't know how, but that's my fault. And just looking initially at the composition, okay. Like, Garden Sensor is good to rush in here. Redemption's pretty good because we don't have, like, most of our team is going to be predictably in a certain spot. And Riven can actually, like, play around getting to the right spot. So Redemption's really good here. But how did we not transition this into a win? How did we screw this up? So that's exactly what we're about to find out. We're going to go ahead and download that, and we're going to hop right in. We're going to find out exactly what we could have done better, because with a scoreline like that, 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 this should be a game we won. So let's review. Let's take a, take a good old gander here. See what we can make. See what we can learn from today's, uh, today's lesson here, reviewing this Jana game. Jana is one, one of the champions I would define as a comfort pick for myself. So whenever I get on to Jana, I kind of expect myself to do well. And seeing myself having done, like, okay on a scoreline, and then still having to be on a loss, that feels like, hmm, I'm not playing this champion correctly. If I was playing this champion I built up for myself, I should have been able to transition better onto the rest of my teammates. So let's take a look here. See what we can learn. Don't think we had any phone K starts. Looks like Oh no, there's a blitzcrank. Let's uh slow it down just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, a bit of a bit of a forward start, but we just threw down the wards to be safe. I remember this now. They threw down that ward. Um so that sort of made me want to not drop my control ward visibly. But uh, at the same time, I wanted to hold well, me through that out. There we go. Uh, at the same time, I wanted to get this control ward down in the position to actually help out. So that is exactly what we wind up doing. We just boss coming over to make sure we can uh, help leash that out. Save for a couple extra autos there because we want to throw down another shield for the Gromp. Help out Uji or start. Pretty good. This is a little dangerous. He's thankfully weaving in and out of the brush. So like, at this point, this is theoretically a range that I could start to dodge from if he was right in the corner. But seeing him back, we can go forward. We want to stay all the way back in case he blinds hooks into the brush. And as soon as he starts to go within hook range, we just back right back. This is a play there. Hold on, let me go back and see that hook. Luckily it didn't hit us. Another option is to just stay behind the minions like Jinx is doing, but if we group together, it's going to give him a much easier target onto at least one person. So kind of splitting us apart. Yeah, I stepped too far forward there. I immediately start correcting by going back, and this is just very lucky. Very lucky. The hitbox on that just happened to go in my favor there. Almost certainly should have been a pull. I'm not sure if I was going forward for a coin or not, but regardless, I need to back out in those situations. I would say it's probably right just to give up uh, any sort of coins immediately in lane on the first wave or so. Nice deny by Blitzcrank of the uh, Blast Cone there. I was kind of wondering where they had gone, so seeing them hop over to that Blast Cone uh, is very interesting. I might look to do that as a support myself going forward just to deny any jungler ganks coming from the north side of the map. Similar thing, using the minions to block. Luckily, Jinx can dodge it as well. Very well. First blood going over to them. That's a little unfortunate, but not too big a deal. Oh. 
Like, still bothering us, even in the lesson today. It's real bad. Okay, so let's go back. Back, but back, back it up. Because I think my shield was down, so I might have actually misused my shield here. Come on. Alright. So let's watch for the shield placement. So I go forward to pick up the coin. I kind of go this way to try and bend him towards this side of the minions here. To make him go like this. Because theoretically he could just walk right up to me and knock me up. But if I make him come on this side of the minions, that gives a good like line of coverage for Jinx to retreat through. If I come this way and I'm standing more here, and he instead positions over this way, that's a really bad line, positions this way to here, then the line of coverage is like this, and he almost certainly gets a hook onto Jinx here. So I think this is the proper way to go forward, even though it's a little risky. I don't mind as much myself getting some damage. And this is good trying to cheat around the minions on our way back out. I go forward again for this coin. This is wrong, I think, because this is a mana coin. I don't need this at all. Okay, so that's what it was. So, seeing that I was already here for the mana coin, I threw down the shield. And unfortunately, he does land it onto Jinx. I think the shield was mostly up for that. But I still... I shouldn't grieve for mana coins like that. Because as Jan, I usually don't have tons of mana issues in lane. So... Just being like, hey, let me just throw out a shield for why not sake and uh, grab a coin since it's here. Gold coins, I should do something like that, but not for mana coins. And I shouldn't spend the mana just to need it, especially. Like right here? Okay, I can go forward and pick that up, no problem. Luckily, he doesn't land up there. But I think I definitely need to be a little bit more... A little bit more cautious early game with those first few mana coin drops. Actually block some of it afterwards with the shield, so that's fine. And the reason I was positioning so far forward there is because Udyr just uh, popped this plant here and knocked the vision, so they thought it was possible he was coming. Since we didn't see any awards down, we knew they didn't see that he wasn't coming, so I just sort of pump faked like he was there. Trying to give Jinx a little bit more breathing room with the minions. Okay, so he just threw down his speed, so I just need to split away from Jinx as far as possible. Even if it guarantees a hook on me, because I'm not creating it as much distance. I just need to keep sort of juking back and forth. That's really good too. The knock-up, right before he's about to hook, so I can get myself a little spare time to create more distance. That was pretty good. Can't always make that work. Um, let's see what else we do here. Good pressure from them. I'm behind the minion, back off as it's about to go down. I could have been rotating this whole time. Let's actually see when the first time we saw that was. So we did see him even going over to invade. We saw him over the pink ward, the control ward. So right here, instead of screwing around with the blitz, I should immediately be heading this way. To start making my way up to Udyr on the map. Because we know since he just went right past this control ward, he's probably either going for wolves, or he's going to wrap around and try and get this blue. Or he's going for a wrap around gank this way. But we have such strong vision right here, we would start to know as soon as he pops his head out. So like, by here especially, especially once his vision line connects, right? There's like theoretically one spot he could be where we don't quite see him yet, but especially once this vision line is connected, that's saying he's deep in our territory. A defensive line has been established by Viger and Graves right now. Or Viger and Udyr. So he's only got two ways to go, right? He has to run through Udyr or he has to run through Viger. So if he takes the run through Udyr option, I need to start going this way. And this is me being like, oh, I'm not jungler, I'm not paying attention to his pings. And see, here here we go, he runs right through Udyr. We're still not rotating. We just didn't rotate, so this is bad, we missed a rotation. 
I feel like we've done a thousand episodes on map awareness, but we're gonna have to just keep on fucking doing them because I'm just so bad. Luckily, they're able to make it work on their own because Viger uh, has six. We aren't able to get the exhaust down early enough to make it matter, and we don't have Q anymore to disrupt. Even if he's exhausted, there's no reason I should be there. The only reason would be to bait to get Jinx involved, but this is not necessarily a fight we're going to win. That's insane. Did he just ult now or something? Wow. Alright. Well, that's nice. Hmm. This did wind up working out pretty well for us. Towards the end there. I still think that was a little bit too aggressive of a play. It did wind up working out, but I think I was probably trying to overcompensate for the fact that I was so late getting there that I was super hard committed to forcing the engagement to continue on. I need to not play so much in the past. If I'm slow to rotate, well, this is too bad. I've been, I'm now slow to get there, and now it's already happening. That doesn't mean I should, like, overcompensate and just try and go ham. Because then we're going ham on a bad play for no reason. Seems fun. This was an interesting flash, because I couldn't quite make it there. Let me skip forward here a bit. Okay, so I see the blitz pulls down. So I immediately throw out the slow, and I'm like, alright. Hey, I hit the knockup even better. He's now my target. Right here, I could totally flash. I could flash from here to here, and then just ult. And I ult him right back into Jinx. Right off the bat. This was a good time to ult. Flash ult. If I was going to go for it. This is too far forward, right? One, it's too late. Because I would be like right here on him now. Roughly. So I wouldn't guarantee get a knockback, which is why I did it in this direction at that point. I think if I had been a little quicker after he had auto-attacked, I could have got him. But then I have to flash here, and then I have to kind of wait. And as soon as Blitz back on at least Blitz, and at most, or, and it also at least separate them like this. So this isn't necessarily the ideal thing I was going for, but it does give plenty of time for Jinx to pick one target. That was poor pathing. I started to wrap around to cut off the retreat. It does ensure I'm still here for blitz, but that just winds up being free damage. So I flash ult for free damage. Seems a little questionable. If I continue here, I had to shield myself because I got hooked. That's just poor micro. Oh. Fancy feet here on the way out. Jinx able to just point blank cult him, I remember that now. Alright, I mean that winded up working out for us. I think it's a little over aggression. I think the map uh, going for the coin so aggressively earlier is also over aggression. Which cost us a little bit early on. Map awareness is a problem. But that's been a problem for us. When I'm on my comfort champion, I think I play extra aggressive. Just because I feel like, oh, well, I should rock this. This is a Janna game. I can I can knock them out, no problem. That's not always the case. And like this, it's fairly aggressive. Fairly aggressive play there. Um, let me review that. So I see that's warded. I don't see Jin, right? I just saw him dip into the Fog of War. So I open with this. And then I do see Jin coming back. So once I see Jin here, this is actually totally fine. What's he gonna do? Ult me, knock me up into the air, pull me to himself alone. That's fine. And Jinx has the push, so that was actually alright. A little risky going for it at the start, but I think I was prepared to back away should Jin have shown himself over there. But it's kind of a it's kind of a tight bottleneck, and Blitz can get an easy pull. So it's definitely a risky play. It might have been too aggressive. It worked out, but it wasn't guaranteed. Let's go ahead and skip ahead a little bit. I think it's actually a good point to stop. 
Uh, he's looking for pulls. Alright, I kind of just walked into that one. I think this was alright because this ults them into a huge call for help. Because look at the minion distribution now. They have one minion here. And we have this entire wave here. So both of them are out of position. Plus, Blitz is now drawing aggro from the turret. And Jinx can sort of pick up the litter here. He can't fight back because he's exhausted. I think that's okay. Again, a little risky, but I'm healing way up on up. And I get to just walk away. I think the shield on myself was unnecessary there. I think I should have shielded Jinx. And I did whiff the Q at the end there. I wasn't close enough. Jinx again just able to be like, Alright, well I know how much damage my ult does. <laughs> Good on Jinx. She's playing it right. This is an opportunity for us to actually be more aggressive. Good on us waiting for that last uh, crit shot. Yeah, but like we should have done that a little bit sooner was more in position to make use of it. <laughs> I just back in vision. Not even gonna interrupt my recall. Cocky. Very cocky. Little, little over aggressive play there too. Jinx didn't have to tank that. But she was probably going back anyway, so not the worst loss there. Going for the assist here. Viger rotates over. Oh, we goes in on the Viger though. Eh. Didn't quite make that one work. Playing way far back here. That was actually pretty bad. So, let's watch and see what we're going for here. Are we going to like rotate through here? So we do retreat back because of Elkaz. We have our like more front line here. As soon as this E comes out, I should immediately turn and start walking this way, right? Either to shield Viger, just to make sure he can survive the engagement that's about to break out. Because he just stunned their AD, right? Or their top, but effectively their AD. Their squishy top. <laughs> and Udyr, I can give the shield to because he's going to go into melee range. And he's going to do a whole bunch of auto attacks. So the shield actually really helps him. Both to survive going into melee range and do more damage with his autos. So I walked about this far. Turning and going away. So, I mean, just at any point, if we had gone twice that distance in the right direction, I could probably be here right now. Probably. Probably could be right here. And I could either already have a shield on fire, or I could be in position for ulti. I'm not actually sure if that's up, because those are bugged still. Yeah, but right here, I could be making the decision point, right? I could be deciding to go in and back up Udyr to make this more likely to succeed, knowing that there's also a stun down here. Or I could be retreating back with Viger and be basically in the same position I'm at, but be over here, which is a more ideal position. And it cuts off this flank opportunity from Blitz. Sure, Blitz does some significant damage on me, but I could probably live with a shield on myself. Viger is very vulnerable right now, doesn't need to be. And again, if I was here shielding Udyr, he wouldn't have gone down. Almost certainly wouldn't have gone down. There's an ult. Doesn't really do too much. A really good play by Blitz to ult to silence me. I'm not sure if that was intended or it just happened to work out, but he did can't cut off a large portion of my ult, and I wasn't really playing around his ability to do that, so that's my bad. Do get the flying gold coin from the Jinx ult. Good snipe by her. I think we misplayed that a little bit. That one was, oddly enough, too defensive. So I guess we're kind of straddling the line. We're too aggressive in lane. And come that mid-game, that first mid-game fight, I think we were too defensive. Or, it wasn't necessarily too defensive, because I went in pretty hard once I did go in. I think I was just slow to rotate. Slow to get into proper position for it. I was slow to rotate to it because I didn't have the right map awareness, I think. Of Viger lane. Oh man, we're lagging pretty hard. Hold on. So look at this because this is an important fight. So I'm going forward to try and reclaim this brush. See, it's got a control ward in, so. Just trying to keep Velkaz around. I actually do eat the Q there. 
I actually need a lot of damage, so that's just poor micro on my part. I shield myself just out of fear. I think that's probably right because I wasn't sure if Valkaz's ult was up, didn't want to give a free kill. I'm gonna get this for free, I'm pretty sure. Go okay, try and get a little bit more vision, draw attention away. Eat up the fruit so I'm nice and healthy, don't have to back. Then rotate down here for the fight. Silence is a little annoying. Put on the chase. That's a pretty good ultimate. Hmm. I'm not sure if I had to cancel it there. Let me actually go back and watch that again. Good flash. I think the Q would have just clipped him there. Exhaust him. Probably did need to back off there. Yeah, because the shield is mostly what kept me alive. Yeah, I just eat the first shot. And Jinx can't land the rocket, so that's too bad. Super cross map though. Wouldn't expect her to be able to land that. Um, I don't know about that. That one could have gone better. I think I played that alright, it just worked out unfortunately for us in the end. At least not such a glaring difference that it's immediately obvious to me. Oh well, let's go look at that. So I had a good flank on her. Uh... Yeah, so I actually missed my Crotin and popped that plant on my way up. So luckily Zaya wasn't paying attention, so I look to try to get her. I'm being aware of these feathers, and I still got rooted. I'm a little slow to ult there. Eh. I think that was just a little slow to ult, a little greedy play. Could have played that better. This is dangerous, but I'm trying to defend this charge as much as I can here. Throw in a shield and get on out of there. Get back to lane here. Throw down the shield. I don't think I had ult available. I didn't, so not much more I could have done about that. I'm trying to bait him to go on to me. Actually take a good chunk of damage again. Again, trying to draw a focus away from the turret. Hold on, let me look at that again. It's trying to draw a focus away from the turret. And I do so well that Blitz actually lands a pull on me. Where is the pull? Right here. Okay, I just walked into pull range. Super easy. I mean, look at this. There's no minions here to defend me. Sure, I get a Q to knock them up, but that's just silly. So I wind up wasting ultimate there. Good that Jin immediately cancels it, because on the flank was Udyr. Maybe that's a Udyr flanking, we could defend it properly, but... Picking a fight that readily was probably not the right choice. Actually bait me into throwing out my E a little early, so I can't defend it. Good play by them. Rotate okay, mid, trying to defend this a little bit, trying to soak the XP and minions. Leave as soon as Udyr's there. Actually, a little slow to rotate because Velkaz is on me with the Q. Do wind up just backing off. And I mean, the scoreline looks really close, but we are so far behind in gold. We have to play carefully and concede a lot of stuff. So, knowing that they were pressing on bot side, good time to go ward. I think that's good uh, rotation for me. You just spend at that point. Not quite sure what happened. This is a bit of a long one here. Good fancy feet. I actually used Jinx to body for the last one. 
eat a little bit of the starting damage, so I have to back off again. Okay, I think I've done this a couple times. On my way out, I think I should shield someone else, not myself. I think this is me being afraid, like, oh, I'm about to ignite down. This is not ignite, this is uh, Morales, and everybody builds Morales now. So I think I need to just throw that, and then I could have gone back to base and healed. This is a little, little greedy to immediately go right out to here. Trying to maintain presence on the map, but... Speed over to where I'm over here. Pretty aggressive. I do bait the engage into Riven, and can exhaust him on my way out. I'm living on a nice edge here. Unfortunately, Riven goes down here too, it looks like. Oh, yeah. And I came here to ult because I thought Riven was going to be there. Maybe seeing the ult availability was what gave me the confidence to do that, because if they engaged on me really hard, I could have... Uh, there's some bursts with Volkaz, though, and there's the pull with blue. So that might have been a little too risky. And at the end of the day, since I couldn't back her up effectively enough, it not only was too risky for me to make that play, it cost our team because Riven made the play and I couldn't effectively back her up. So I think that is my fault that it went poorly there. Going around trying to soak with coins as much as possible here. Throw it on the shield to dodge a little damage. Tree back. Luckily I didn't get pulled there. And disengage here. Good use by Blitz again to cancel the ultimate. Really impressed by that from this game. Fortunately we can't make that work. We do wind up surviving ourselves. I'm trying to bait an engagement over here. I think at one point Graves actually does step, yeah, step too far forward. We got the kill on him. Um, I think that's GG if I recall correctly. Well, maybe not. I think it went on a little bit, yeah. They, this is pretty much already over at this, at this point, though. So let's watch this close out, see if there's anything else. Uh, unfortunately, there's no wards up on Jinx's side. So she made it all the way up there, but couldn't follow through on it. Perhaps should have been pushing out with Udyr. I think that's what I should have done. Oh, I remember Jinx actually wound up being a hero this game. So, Udyr's already dead. Let me jump back a little bit longer. Right here, I should be with Udyr right now. There's no reason I shouldn't be here backing Udyr up when he's on a warding mission. So I threw down one ward. Great. But there he is. I need to be with him. Especially since I'm wearing, wearing red. Like, we can both kite pretty effectively. Instead of going back to greed for these minion coins, I should be right here. Should be back here. As soon as that happens, he can get out with the move speed, and I could have shielded him. Oh, he would have easily survived. Easily survived. So that's my fault. I need to be escorting you to your own ward missions. Did he go smite stone? He didn't. Mm, he actually, I'm not sure what he was going with. Maybe he had a control ward or something. I'm not sure what vision he was going, but nonetheless, it's my job to escort our warders. Hero Jinx stealing it. And we actually jumped up the preventing Julia. And then I ult just to keep them away to buy us a little time. Trying to defend this. Doing the best we possibly can here. Staying alive. Ah, uh ah, -uh ah. -uh. Almost defend this. Jinx is... Jinx was a big hero of that game. Just couldn't quite make it work. But okay, so what are the lessons from that game, right? The lessons were... Here, come to my face. Come to my face. Early game, we play too aggressively. Because we're on a comfort champ. And we just play aggressive too aggressively when we're on a comfort champ. In the mid game, it actually looked like in the first couple skirmishes we were like too defensive. Though I think that stemmed from us having like poor like speed on rotating to the engagement. We had defensive, overly defensive positioning because I think we just weren't ha bringing the proper map awareness to get there on time. So that really hurt us. Um, 
And then we played like how to phrase this. We we would go into positions that were very risky for us. And sure, since we are on our comfort champion, we can actually wind up surviving stuff like that. But us being there as if if we were full health and we made a risky play like we saw earlier going forward trying to bait the engagement so we could exhaust somebody and then let Riven come around a corner from Fog of War and immediately stun them and start doing her combo. That would work if I was full health and could then stay there and back her up and peel for her a little bit, uh, maybe throw out the ult to make sure she can disengage properly after all ending on one particular target. But since I was so low, sure I can bait the engagement to happen immediately and survive. But once that happens, then what? And I'm not good at that question, right? I kind of leave that up to the top laner. Like if the top laner goes in, I assume they know what they're doing and can make it work. But I need to start thinking about that. Because I, by baiting these engagements, I'm baiting my team into it too. So I need to stop before I think, hey, I'm, a, I'm good at this, I know I can survive this, and I know they think I can't. Just because I can survive it and can force them to try and fight me and by proxy our team doesn't mean I should. And when we're behind like that, sure, generally speaking, it's better to pick a fight because if we trade evenly, that's still an advantage for us because we're so far behind at that point. We were like 10k gold down or something like that. But, eh... You know, it's not, if we're going to lose that fight, we're just going to die, absolutely not worth it. And I think in that particular instance, like, I used Exhaust, Riven died, I don't know what summoner she burned off the top of my head, she might have even flashed, um, and I ulted, and, like, all those cooldowns were up for nothing to give up a kill for Riven, and I baited that engagement. So I need to be more responsible in baiting, right? I And that, that kind of goes to the early aggression. I was too far forward like baiting out conflicts and like in the tri brush area when I was clearing that pink ward or red ward control ward and after we saw Jin coming back to lane okay great that's fine but I should have backed off initially and I was thinking oh what are they going to do engage on me I can survive this I can win this but is Jinx in position to follow up to make sure that we can win that sure I will survive but will I take poke for no reason, overall, will we lose the trade in aggregate? What is Jinx gaining by shoving that wave a little bit more? Is Jin going to be able to catch it anyway because he's right there? It's just like the little path right from uh, lane up to Tribrush in the bot lane. Like, he's going to catch all those minions, too. It's not like he's going to chase me and they're going to crash into his turret and he'll miss the XP and gold. He's going to walk right back. So what am I really gaining from that aside from, like, clearing out the control ward and kind of being in Blitz's face about it because I'm cocky and tilting Blitz. Sure, that's a, that's a minor thing. Maybe we tilt at Blitz. Maybe we make Blitz go a little too aggressive on us to compensate later. That's our problem. We can't project our problem of overcompensating later on to other people. What we need to do is calculate a little bit more. And we're not, we're not doing the calculated plays. We are making plays and we are good at assessing situations, but we aren't necessarily calculating whether or not those situations are going to be worth engaging into and worth picking out, uh, picking those fights out, baiting those fights out. We gotta be more calculated with our play. Sure, it's good that we're making measured play right now, but it's not calculated. I think that's an important distinction. I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, and if you know, I mean, if that makes sense to you and you know somebody who makes measured plays but not calculated plays, send them this. Hopefully this is helpful to them. Um, I think it was really important for me to see this today because it's, like, it's a very simple thing to be, like, continually as we've been doing, oh, well, we don't have good map awareness, we're slow to rotate because we're not paying close enough attention to the mini-map. Like, that's a lesson we've been hitting on a couple times, and that was here, too. Definitely, we need to just be better on the mini-map. We need to drill focusing even harder on the minimap aspect. Maybe we should rework the drills we do every day to actually be more minimap centric in some way. But that might be something we look into doing. <laughs> but we'll leave that for outside the lesson. Um, what we need to do for sure is be more calculated in our play. And if we're looking to like be in a certain area, why? Why are we being there? Okay, yes, we can be here. Yes, we can move in these ways once we're there, 
But why? Why are we there? What are we doing once we're there? What is the calculation? What is the cost of being here versus still being back at lane with our AD? What's the benefit? Is it worth the risk? Let's calculate. Let's think. Let's not, let's not just do a play because we know we can. Let's think it through and say, why are we doing this play? Is this worth it to do? And if so, yes, let's do it. Let's execute it and be a baller about it and be in Blitz's face. <laughs> but let's not just do it just to do it. Um, we're not doing this game to power trip. We're doing this game to win. <laughs> so um, I think being a little bit more calculated is probably what we need to do. Um, so again, thank you for watching the video. I hope you guys learned something today. If you know somebody who could uh, you know, benefit from seeing these mistakes that I've been making, feel free to forward them the video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next lesson.